So earlier this year, February 9th, to be exact, the matchup between Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia was officially announced for April 20th in Las Vegas, Nevada. Obviously, the fight didn't happen in Las Vegas, but that's neither here nor there. For the WBC super lightweight title, Devin Haney was coming off of a fantastic victory over Regis Program, while his opponent, Ryan Garcia, looking subpar in a bounce back fight versus Oscar Duarte. After being brutally knocked out by Gervonta Davis. Left many people including myself scratching their heads as of why. Why would Devin Haney take a fight with a guy that was obviously not on his level. But then I suddenly realized. This isn't just you know any run of the mill. Joe Schmo, any kind of cherry pig. No, this is uh, Ryan Garcia. So, I seen what Devin Haney was doing. You know, it was a money grab by the Haney's. It was the most reward for the least amount of risk. Uh, Because of Ryan Garcia's huge social media following and his presence, Devin Haney seen a opportunity where he could capitalize on the most gains Uh, financially status wise but this is where I proved to you guys that this fight was a cherry pick gone wrong in the super lightweight division there are four different world champions the IBF world champion Subriel Matias Teofimo Lopez, the WBO title holder. And at the time, the WBA world champion was Roley Romero. But the WBA has recently switched hands over to Isaac Pitbull Cruz. And finally, Devin Haney holds the green belt, the WBC title. Now, at the time... The only guy that was busy at the time and was not available for Devin Haney to fight was Roley Romero. He already had a fight lined up for March 30th versus Pitbull Cruz. So that left two world champions available for Devin to choose from. The WBO champion, Teofimo Lopez, or the IBF champion, Sabriel Matias. But Devin Haney decided not to fight either one of those guys. What Devin Haney decided to do was to fight a guy with no belt. Who's never been a world champion. Has never been successful against top tier competition. Ryan Garcia. And you see. This is why the most dangerous guys to fight. Are the guys with nothing to lose. Okay. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Ryan Garcia. Okay. Why would Ryan Garcia worry about making weight? He has no belt. That he fears losing. You know what I'm saying? He has no undefeated record. He doesn't have that to defend either. You know. These guys, the guys with nothing to lose, like Ryan Garcia, are the most dangerous. Because Ryan Garcia had nothing to lose and everything to gain. Do you think Subriel Matias would have not made weight? Of course not. Subriel Matias would have made sure he made weight. Why? Because Subriel Matias has an IBF world title. He doesn't want to lose. How about Teofimo Lopez? You think Teofimo Lopez, uh, he wants to lose that WBO title on the scale? No. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the perfect example of a cherry pig gone wrong. 
Devin Haney had at least two more deserving and more credible opponents who were more than willing and able to step into that ring with you. But you decided to pick on, well, in Haney's mind, the most vulnerable of the opponents. Because Ryan Garcia was battling mental health issues and he was it just, he just seemed to be more focused on everything else but boxing. Devin Haney thought that Ryan Garcia was food. He thought that was a opponent that he could exploit. But unfortunately for Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia was playing possum. Now, I'm already knowing what I'm going to hear from the Devin Haney fans. All the excuses like Ryan Garcia was on pads. He was a, he's a cheater, etc., etc. So that leads me to my next topic of conversation that I wanted to get to. But first, I want to show you guys this clip. It's about Devin Haney on ESPN. Okay, he's talking about Ryan Garcia cheating, and he also talks about how he doesn't want the rematch with Ryan Garcia. So. Watch this clip and then we will break it down afterwards. Interested are you, are you in getting back in there with him again? Honestly, I'm not too interested in it. Um, you know, during the buildup, we've seen a lot of interesting things from him. You know, we've seen his character. Uh, we've seen the guy cheat. We see, we, we see the type of person that he is. Um, I don't see myself ever, ever, you know, getting back in the ring. But, you know, I'm, I'm a fighter. I'm speaking you know, right now with how, with how I feel, but we never know what the future holds. My initial thought after hearing those words out of Devin the Dream Haney's mouth, I was like, what the fuck? Yo, you don't want your revenge? After finding out you were cheated? Does he not know that after Ryan got caught cheating, Devin Haney is more than deserving of a rematch? Or does he just not want it? Devin Haney fans, your boy is out here making y'all look stupid. This guy is no warrior. A true warrior would have been like, oh, hell yeah. The moment he found out Ryan Garcia cheated him, he'd have been like, yes, let me get my get back on a on an even playing field. You know what I'm saying? Fuck out of here, man. This dude is no warrior. He said he doesn't want the rematch with Ryan Garcia because he's a cheater and because of the type of person that he is. If that's not one of the most sissiest things I've ever heard come out of a boxer's mouth, man. Where did he do that at, bro? Like, what the fuck? Y'all want to know what a real warrior looks like? This is what a real warrior looks like. Miguel Cotto. When Miguel Cotto fought Margarito... Margarito was hitting Miguel Cotto in the face with loaded gloves. Had plaster in them shits. And it wasn't until Margarito before the Sugar Shane Mosley fight where Sugar Shane's trainer Nazim Richardson found out and exposed Margarito. Cotto was ready to fight Margarito again. No hesitation. He went back in that ring and got his get back like a man. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather fight a dude that's on steroids than fighting a guy with, with fucking concrete in his gloves. That's like, that's like brass knuckles. Fuck that. Give me the steroid head any day. I'll fight a juicer before I fight a guy with fucking brass knuckles on. But anyways, guys, that's all I got for this one. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Also, want to give a shout out to all my new subscribers and a special shout out to all the ones that's been rocking with me for a while now. My day ones. Thank you for fucking with me. And with that, this has been your boy O-Dog boxing in the mouth. This bitch.